Hey guys, Patrick again, and today we're going to be going over another one of my, well actually two, uh, fake martial arts stories that my bullshit martial arts friend tried to pass off as truth. And today we're going to be going over both of his knife fight stories, or knife self-defense stories, as uh, he was unarmed in both of these stories uh, when he claims that a man pulled a knife on him. Alright, so let's get into the first one. So the first one takes place, allegedly, when he is 13 years old, and he was in middle school at the time, and what happened was, is there was this really weird kid, it wasn't him though, there was this really weird kid who, uh, who, you know, he didn't quite fit in, he was like the weirdo outsider, again, not him, uh, who didn't talk to anyone and didn't have any friends or anything like that. Um, you know, he wore his, uh, his Lincoln Park t-shirts, and he wore his hair down in his face, and, and, you know, he, he was like this, like, mm. and he said one day, he was just staring at him, like, all day, like, all day, just staring at him for no, no reason, just staring at him, uh, like, creepy, creepy, and apparently he was also in, like, all of his classes, so this happened, like, all day, and then what happened was, is, uh, coincidentally, he missed the bus that day, so he had to call his grandma, uh, and wait out in front of the school for him to get picked up by his grandmother. And while he was standing there waiting, the, the creepy kid, he comes out. He, he comes out from, like, behind a corner of the school, and he doesn't say anything. And my fake martial arts friend is like, oh, hey, what, what's going on? And so then the creepy kid reaches somewhere, he didn't specify where, in a jacket or behind him or whatever, let's say it doesn't matter, whatever, he reaches somewhere and he pulls out, what does he pull out? Not just a knife, not, not a kitchen knife, not a pocket knife, but one of those fucking crazy, like, 10 inch long serrated hunting blades, like those survival blades, you know what I mean? Like one of those crazy, crazy hunting knives is what he pulls out. And my fake martial arts friend is like, oh, what is that? And he goes, it's my dance. Sure he did. This honestly makes me think of like a Jeff the Killer creepypasta. So then he he rushes and my fake martial arts friend, yeah, and then slow-mo in his mind. This is exactly how he, how he told me the story. Slow-mo in his mind. Um... You know, he played out all the scenarios like an anime where, like, you know, you see, like, boop, 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 And he was like, oh, each one results in my death. And by this point, he still did not get stabbed. Um, It's still, like, playing slow-mo in his mind. Yeah! And, and he's, like, and he's still, like, thinking. He's still thinking, oh, man, what can I do? What can I do? And, and again, it's not like... It's not like, oh, he's like slashing at him and he's dodging as he's thinking or whatever. No, this is, he's, he's thinking hyper fast. He's like, he's like Sonic the Hedgehog or the Flash. Like he, his brain power processes at, at a million times speed. So then finally he comes up with a defense. And by this point in time, again, because his brain is so fast, you know, he had plenty of time to do this. He, he, he took off his book bag and he wore it in his front like Captain America's shield. And, and the, the kid took, took his, his knife and he went, yeah, and he stabbed it right through the book bag. But all the book bag and the books, you know, caught the knife. Like, like, it was stuck in there now. And he went, yeah, and he, and he, and he, you know, ripped the knife out of his hand that way. And he went, sure, and he karate kicked him. And he, and he flew backwards. He was like, he was like, brrrr, and he fucking... And he, and he crashed to the ground, um, completely stunned. And my fake martial arts friend, uh, ran away. <laughs> and after he told me that story, I remember, um, he was 16, 17 and I was 14, 15 at the time. And I was like, whoa, how, how'd your, how'd your grandma react to that? And he was like, oh, I never told her. And I was like. Come again? I knew right there it was bullshit. Because if I was attacked with a knife by one of my classmates, I would not ever keep that information to myself. 
And I and then I was like, well, how did you cover it up or whatever? Didn't didn't all your books didn't your book bag and all your books have a knife in them? And he's like, no, I, I got rid of that before my my grandmother picked me up. And I was like, wait a minute, if that wouldn't get rid of the fucking hole that would be in all your textbooks and in your book bag, like there'd be like holes fucking in that shit. And he's like, no, no one ever questioned me about that. And I'm like, yeah. Sure they did. Yeah, because it didn't happen. And then I was like, well, what happened to that kid? Like, like, what, what, you just, you guys were just classmates the rest of the year? Teacher, can I move seats? Billy tried to stab me yesterday, and now I just feel kind of awkward around him. And he said, no, that was the weirdest thing. The kid just disappeared from school after that. Like, he never came back to school, and no one ever questioned where he went because he didn't have any friends or anybody who cared about him and apparently even the teachers didn't care about him. Ah, uh, Billy absent again? Well, fuck that kid. I hear he tries to stab people with knives. And again, I was just like, uh-huh, sure. So, so, you never told anyone and he also just happened to disappear after that incident. Almost like he was no longer needed for your story after that event. <laughs> Much like a filler plot, in an anime, it didn't actually happen, so those characters can't be referenced again. <laughs> All right, so you might be saying, well, he was just a dumbass teenager, probably just trying to tell stories to look cool in front of his friends, whatever. Okay, well, this second story takes place when he was like early 20s, both when he said it happened and when he tried to pass it off as real. So he comes to me one day and he's like, hey, Pat, you'll never believe it. Somebody mugged me last night. And I was like, Oh my God, are you okay? Like, did they take any of your money? Are you hurt at all? He's like, no, I beat the guy up. And I was like, oh, okay. How did that happen? And he said, well, it was midnight or 1 a.m. And I was going to my local drugstore to pick up my prescription. But as I was entering, the guy was leaving and he came out and he pulled out a knife. This time, just a regular knife, not a fucking crazy ass hunting knife. And he said, don't be stupid, kid. And he held it to him like this. And my fake martial arts friend was like, that's not how you hold a knife in his head, like in his, in his uh, sh shonen protagonist inner monologue. And he went, yaw, and he wrist-striked the bottom of the blade like this, like, yaw, and the knife went flying out of his hands. And he went, and like immediately off of that, he went, yaw, karate chopped him in the neck, and the guy went, yaw, and then... The guy was like scrambling. He was like, "Oh no!" And he and he went and he dove for the knife, like like whoa. And then and then, luckily, my my friend was also an expert in karate, and so he roundhouse kicked him in the face right as he went diving for the knife. He went yo, and he, and he smashed him backwards. He was like, "Oh no, my face!" And and then immediately, my fake martial arts friend was like, "Yo, no one messes with my friends." <laughs> <laughs> Or at least I assume he said that, you know, because it was an anime and all. And then he, he, m much like Master Ken from Enter the Dojo, okay, from episode one, he stomped on his face. He stomped on his solar plexus. And then he stomped on his groin. And then, and then the guy was like unconscious after that. And keep in mind, my fake martial arts friend has always been at least 300 pounds. And at this point, I think he might have even been 400 pounds. So if he... Truly, like, with all of his body weight, stomped on somebody's face, solar plexus, and groin, and there was nothing but pavement underneath them, they might have actually died. So then, in, so what, what did he do after that? He didn't call the police, no. He immediately went into the drugstore to pick up his prescription. But oh no, the, dr the drugstore at the back, like the pharmacy pickup, was closed. And when he walked back outside, guy was gone. And it's just like, wow, that guy must have been really fucking tough to walk off that damage. Holy shit. And I asked him if he planned on filling out a police report or whatever. And he's like, no, I don't want my mom to worry. Uh, my, mo my mom would totally worry about me. And, and I don't want that. And, you know, I don't even know what the guy's name is or what he looked like anyway. He was dark, so I didn't get a good look at him. And it's like, you didn't get a good look at him. You were able to fucking hit him with... Pinpoint accuracy, <laughs> but you couldn't tell what he looked like. But so guys, those were both of those stories. 
Let me know what you think about them down in the comments. I think you already know what I think about them. I'm Patrick, and I'll see you next time.